Okay, so let's carry on with where uh, Michal stopped and speak about sequence alignment with BioPython. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we can do pairwise sequence alignment with BioPython. Uh, but I should note first that BioPython is somewhat limited in what it allows us to do when it comes to uh, sequence alignment. So first off, it supports only pairwise alignment and not multiple sequence alignment. Now, Michal didn't really get to talk about it, uh, but multiple sequ sequence alignment is this notion of instead of just taking two sequences and trying to align them together, trying to find their homology, maybe. In multiple sequence alignment, we can take more than two sequences. We can take three, four, ten, 100 sequences that we suspect are related, and we use all of them as more evidence to see how they all fit together and arrive at some kind of a consensus between the sequences. It's, for example, very useful to detect motifs that are shared among many different sequences. Uh, in PFAM, for example, you can see it for detecting domains of proteins and stuff like that. So PyPython doesn't allow us to do that. It allows us only to do pairwise alignment. And even with pairwise alignment, the kind of implementation that they give us is not the fastest one. We're going to see that, it, in fact, it's quite slow, uh, this Python implementation. And if you want to have better support for more sophisticated alignment, you may want to use different tools. So you can use BLAST, uh, which Michal demonstrated today, if you want to uh, do some search against a database. Or you can use other tools that may work, for example, as a command line. For example, you can use a Clastal Omega, Clastal W, uh, that is a quite popular choice for doing uh, pairwise or multiple sequence alignment in a more efficient way. And, th and then BioPython can still be kind of useful because uh, many times you get those results which are in all kinds of formats. And for most of the standard tools, you will see that BioPython will help you parse it. So for example, you can give it BLAST results and it will help you to parse those files into meaningful Python objects. So in that respect, Bi BioPython could be very useful, and I think they actually made the right choice. So it doesn't really make sense for them to invest a lot of efforts in trying to catch up with all the newest, most fancy algorithms. They, they, they just give you the basic algorithms, and if you want to use more uh, specialized tools, you're free to use whatever tool you like, and they will help you to parse the results. And I think that that's a good strategy. Uh, but just to mention that BioPython is a bit limited uh, when it comes to just running uh, sequence alignments. OK. So let's open the sequence alignment notebook. So to, to run pairwise alignment we, with bio, we import the sub module, which is called pairwise2, from the BioPython module. And then, for example, if we want to just align two DNA sequences with very basic parameters, we use the align sub submodule of the pairwise submodule, and within it, the global xx function. And we just give it two sequences, and we get the alignments as results. And you can see that when we print it, we get those two tuppers. Within each one of them, we have five different uh, return values. OK, now, at that point, we are not really sure what this means. So if you're not sure what is the return value that some function gives you, uh, like I showed you in an earlier lesson, we could use the question mark syntax, which in IPython and Jupyter will give us some help message. So if I'm not sure what the global XX returns, I can open the help menu. And now I see that it returns this kind of tuple, which um, it says a list of tuples, which are sec A, sec B, score, begin, end. OK, so essentially, it's the first sequence, the second sequence, including all the gaps that it had to open in order to do this alignment. 
And then the score of the alignment, like Michal has taught this morning. And then the start and the end coordinates of where the alignment starts and where it ends. In the case of a global alignment, it's not very meaningful because it's always all the way from the start to the end. But when we do a local alignment, it's very important to know where it starts and where it ends. And the reason that we get a list and not just one of those tuples is that many times we can have a tie and we can actually have two or even more alignments which are actually equally good according to the, the scoring scheme that we specify. So in this case, both of these alignments will get a score of three. Sorry? Do you determine only the best score? Yeah, it will give you only the alignments with the best scores. So, yeah, as, as many alignments as there, as there could be. Okay. Now, here, here I'm just interested in the first alignment, say, so, and then I can put everything in dedicated variables, like we saw many times using this syntax. Now, it's nice that we get all, all of the results, but it's not the most convenient way to look at it. If we want to have a more visualized uh, way of looking at it, it, we can use the format alignment function of the pairwise2 submodule. And when running this uh, function with the alignment results, then it actually gives us this nice uh, textual but more visual uh, representation. So we can see all the matches using those vertical lines and we, we have the gaps and everything is aligned together and we even see the score. Now do you know why I used this asterisk symbol here? It's related to what we learned uh, last lesson. You can give as many arguments that's when we define a function. So when we define a function and we put this asterisk syntax, then it states that this function accepts as many arguments as we want. But the format alignment actually is not one of these functions. The format alignment uh, gets a fixed number of, of arguments. But when we call it the function, we still use this asterisk syntax. Why is it that? Separating the alignment. What do you mean separating them? Sorry? Like what you wrote in the pair of books, you will get five values yeah. and alignment zero. So you want to give the, the five elements, not the five the alignment is zero, but the alignment. Exactly, yeah. So we want to unwrap what we had as a tuple. So the format alignment function, it doesn't get a tuple, it gets five different arguments. So the format alignment accept, accepts to get, uh, expects to get five different arguments. It expects to get SIG A, SIG B, the score, the begin, and the end. Exactly what we get, only that with the return value of the uh, global x, x function, we get it as a tuple and not as separate arguments. So we could do it like that. We could use this index to separate the result into five different variables, and then just feed those variables inside this function, and we would get the same thing. But it would be just more code writing. And we know that in this case, we get a tuple which contains everything we want, we just get it as a tuple instead of five different variables. And when we use the syntax, it actually, um, it actually unfolds everything into separate variables, like this function expects to get. Okay, is it clear? Is the quality of this function or is it? No, it works for any function. So uh, I think we saw it uh, last time. So for example, if I have a function that gets uh, three different arguments, and maybe, I don't know, returns A plus B divided by C. Okay, so, and now we have some maybe return value of some, of some other functions. So maybe we have some list of tuples. We have one, two, and three, and also five, four, five, and six. And we want to, we want to call F with the results of, say, the second results. Okay? So one way to do it would be to use result zero, zero, results, results zero, one, 
and then two. And it would call the function, but it's not a very nice way to do that. We may just specify, want to specify that we just want it to run with the, the first result. But then it wouldn't work, because now we think that I'm just giving it one argument, which happens to be a tuple. So I give it a tuple instead of three different arguments. So I get a type error saying that f missing two required position arguments, b and c. It just gets a. The way to fix it is to use this syntax, which then uh, give them as separate arguments. OK? Sorry? Yeah, it works with uh, list as well. Yeah. Here? Okay, <laughs> yeah, here. Here? No, but here I, I, got, I took the first one on purpose. You see that I have ah, okay. zero. Yeah. I can also do it with the second if I want, and I will get uh, the visualization of the second one. Yeah, I'm going to show you that there is a way to ask via Python, please don't give me all the results, just give me one, and, uh, and it's good enough for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually we, we get to it right now. So we can get it, if we just want the score, so we just want to know how well two sequences match together, but we don't care about the actual alignment, we can just ask to get the score, and then we just get a number. Uh, which is the simplest way. Okay, and then we just get three, and we don't care if it's the first alignment that gives us, us three or the second one. And there is also a way to ask for one alignment only, and if we put that to true, then you see that we just get one of the alignments. We still get a list, by the way, so in this case, we know that we should expect to get a list of one tuple with five different elements. So BiPython decided to, to keep um, to keep the return value in the same format. Uh, but now we just get one value, and it also spares us uh, this computation of, 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 for BiPython to keep track of all the different alignments. So it should also be more efficient if we just want one alignment. Uh, question? And up in the, in the question mark, in the help sign, so I could find all these uh, attributes, score only, one alignment only, but if, if I just press tab, I won't be able to find it. What do you mean pressing tab? So, uh, you have the attribute score only, which was true, right? Or one alignment only, which was true. I guess there's other attributes for the global, uh, for the aligned mm. global attributes, whatever. Something you don't see this uh, argument in the, the help function? Uh, so, I, I mean, let's see. Is where I can find them, in the help section? Um, I mean, that, that depends on how they decided to, they decided to, to document it. So you can see that actually the way they define it is they use the args and key keywords uh, syntax that we saw last time. So it's not, uh, so the good news is that it's very flexible, but the bad news is that you don't, do not get a signature which is very meaningful when you use the function. So you don't really know what arguments it expects to get. Uh, and then you just need to read what they document in the function. Uh, which in this case, I see that indeed they do not document the score only and the one alignment only arguments. Um, maybe if you, s if, you, if you check this function in, in the actual documentation of BiPython, they provide you more details. So we can try to Google it. Um, I think it's some kind of domain. Let's see what we get. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, so here we don't have documentation. Okay, um, classes, functions, by alignment, variables. Yeah, I think maybe we're not in the right, uh, here we are in pairwise. Um, now the one we actually look for is pairwise align, I think. Let's try to look this up. 
Okay, I'm not sure, but I guess that if you get to the right place in their documentation, you might, might, might find more details. <laughs> but it's not, uh, it's not a problem with the question mark syntax, it's a problem with the way they documented the function. Okay. Uh, yeah. So of course, like uh, the, the, the kind of the default arguments that uh, the default parameters that the global xx function are quite naive. So actually, by default, they will give you one score for a match, and they will not penalize mismatches, and they will not penalize gaps. So that's the reason why we get three, even though we have two gaps, which. <laughs> which is a, a quite bad alignment because two gaps for a five letter uh, sequence is, is, is not so good. So in, in real life usage, you may not want to use the global xx function, you may want to use the global ms function, which you, then you can give it more uh, meaningful parameters. For example, you can say that you want a match to account for a score of five and a mismatch to be minus four an opening gap should be minus 10 points, so it should be very expensive. An ex extension should be cheaper, it should be only a pa penalty of, of half a point. And you can see that when we call it this way, then indeed the, the algorithm is incentivized to keep just one gap instead of two gaps, because each new gap is a really, really uh, large penalty. So, so most of the time we will want to use the global MS and not the global XX, which its parameters are too naive to, to use. Okay, so we saw that we could work with DNA sequences. Now if we want to work with protein sequences, again, like, like Michal mentioned today, we will want to give it some kind of a substitution matrix. So we can import the Blossom62 substitution matrix from bio submet matrix info. And then we get all the scores of the Blossom62 and we call this time the global dx function, which gets two sequences and the substitution matrix. And then it will give us the best alignment given these uh, substitution matrix. And like earlier, we can format it and see it visually to see that it makes sense. Now the last parameter, the, the Blossom62, if you look at it, you see that it's just a dictionary, nothing more than that. So just for each pair, just a, a dictionary from tuples of two amino acids to the Blossom62 score. So yeah, you can see that for lysine and ar arginine, you get a minus two. And for each pair of amino acids, you will see what it gives you. It's just a dictionary, so you can you can look up for the real Blossom 62. You can look at the, 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 the original paper, and you can see that these are the, the exact values that the people who developed Blossom 62 came up with. But in biopatterns, they probably just hard coded it as a dictionary, nothing more. Okay, but again. If we just use the global dx function, then gaps will not be penalized. And we, of course, do want to penalize gaps, and then we can use the global ds function, which then, in addition to this dictionary, will also get, get two numbers, one for gap open and one for gap extension. And this time, when we get the best alignment, you can see that it just has one gap. Okay, now you may find all the names of the function to be very arbitrary. So we have global ds, global dx, global xx. What do those numbers even mean? So it turns out it's not random. There is some scheme here. And this I just copied from, I copied it from uh, the documentation of BioPython. I put you the link here. So uh, I think that's the web page I just visited where it documents the pairwise uh, module. So, the convention of the name is that we have global because it's global alignment, and then we have two letters. The first letter specifies how we should handle the scoring of matches and mismatches, 
And the second letter should mention how we want to score gaps opening, gaps extensions, and gaps in general. So the, for the first letter, we can just have x, which is the default, meaning no parameters. So identical characters have score of 1 and otherwise 0. Uh, we can have an m, which, uh, yeah, so, so then we give it two scores, one for a match and one for a mismatch. And then we can have a D like we used with proteins when we just give it a dictionary with all the possible pairs and each pair is gets a score according to this dictionary. Or we can even use a C and give it some callback function. So we can even give it our own function which specifies any kind of, any kind of uh, behavior that we want to code. As for the gap, it has similar index. So again, x means the default, no gap penalties. If we give it an s, that's what we, what we did. So the s says that uh, we want the same open and extend gap penalties for both sequences. So we give it an open uh, gap penalty and an extend gap penalty. And it will reuse the same two scores uh, for the two sequences. And we can use D for different scores, and then we will, will have to give it four different scores, an open and an extension for one sequence, and an open and extension for a second sequence, if we may want it. And a C if, again, we want to give it some callback function. OK. Uh, that was global alignment. As for local alignment, it's very similar, just instead, it's the same kind of, of, of scheme of the name, just instead of, of, loc of global two letters, we give it a local two letters. So for example, we can do it with a DNA, so local MS, we say that we want to give it a match and a mismatch score, like you see here, that's the M, and the S says that we want to give a gap open and a gap extension penalties. But this time we do it with local alignment. And you can see that this time the start and the end that we get, they are really meaningful. So it's not just the start and the end of everything. It actually says that here it's just, uh, it's just two, two letters here and also here. And in both cases, we get a score of 10. And you can see when we visualize it using the format function, you can see uh, what the alignment looks like. Sorry? Because in that case, then you get the highest score, but it still allows the alignment. So you have a percentage of alignment. Actually. What do you mean percentage? How many sequences are aligned with this sequence? Yeah, so, so you get the start and the end uh, indices. So keep in mind that it's zero based index. So the end, so it's starting from zero, and the end is actually one after. So it's actually. Uh, only the nucleotides with index 6 and 7. So the 7th and the 8th nucleotides are, are matched and everything else is, doesn't match. So you can see that it's just two nucleotides out of as many as you have here. What do you mean different ranges? So uh, you said here that only number six and seven indexes are, are the ones that uh, match, right? Yeah. Local. yeah. So what would happen if I would have index number two and, and one and two and, and index number six and seven that they do match? Uh, the local alignment doesn't allow you to have two separate alignments. So just one, still just one chunk of, of, of sequence which is aligned. Within this chunk, you can have as many gaps you, as you want, and th they will be penalized according to the gap penalty scores. Uh, but it doesn't get, uh, allow you to have two different islands of, of alignments uh, where everything in the middle is ignored. So it allows you to ignore just the left side and the right side, but everything in the middle, including get the gaps, is, is part of the alignment. Yeah. 
Uh, and yeah, and, and the, the same concept works for proteins. So if you use local DS, then we can give two protein sequences and we give it the substitution matrix and the GAF scores. And we get a local alignment of these two peptides here. And that's really the end of it. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I, th I think that also summarizes our discussion about BioPython. Uh, I think we won't see many more things related to BioPython, maybe sporadically in, in the exercises. Uh, I will say that we just covered maybe the tip of the iceberg of, of, of the things that you can do with BioPython. And like I said, in the previous lesson, I really encourage you to look up at their documentation and see what else they can offer you 